death after death after death after death also known as the dark souls of platformers oftentimes controller pounding or breaking and rage inducing but coupled with beautiful art from the past sounds familiar you've probably guessed it none other than cuphead in this review we'll be looking at the game's three elements namely the story gameplay and design if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for similar content let's jump into it and start off with the story cuphead involves the perilous journey of two brothers namely cuphead and mugman in a magical land called inkwell isle one day they decide to have fun in the casino, gambling here and there, getting lucky, and winning a ton of coins. In fact, the brothers had too much fun and became complacent, which took a turn for the worst when they lost against the devil. There's nothing much to say about the story and the game's objective because they are both straightforward. Defeat bosses to collect their souls in the form of contracts and then give these to the devil. Doing so will release Cuphead and Mugman from their debt. So it begs the question, do you have what it takes to beat all of them including the devil? This brings us to the heart of Cuphead, which is the gameplay. It goes without saying, Cuphead is one heck of a challenging game. I've never tried playing it using keyboard and mouse, so this review entirely revolves around using default controls with an Xbox controller. So the game is divided into five parts. We have the tutorial, Inkwell Isles 1, 2, 3, and the finale. For the tutorial, you get an idea of Cuphead or Mugman's movements, including attack, dash, jump, and parry. Now, it can be confusing at first because of how many buttons you have to get acquainted with, but I promise you, the experience gets better as you become more exposed to the game. For the Inkwell Isle levels, we encounter run-and-guns and several bosses. Run-and-guns are what I would like to refer to as quote-unquote rest periods because you don't necessarily fight against a boss. Instead, what you do is to collect as many coins as possible, usually a maximum of 5 per level, in order to purchase upgrades, which you will then use against any enemy. Now, there are a lot of upgrades to choose from. May it be another weapon or shooter, a special attack or super, and a tactical maneuver or charm. What the game does right is having these numerous customizations in place that enables players to switch between different playstyles whenever they see fit. When choosing shooters alone, you already have six options. Personally, I prefer the wide reach of the spread attack or the homing missile chaser shots when enemies keep moving in several directions because of its multi-directed attack power. Additionally, the default pea shooter is also relevant when bosses decide to stay in the same direction because of its linear attack power. For the finale, let's just say I'll keep it as a surprise until you reach that level. But more or less, the mechanics are the same. Cuphead's gameplay is hard fun, and I couldn't emphasize it more. The game is definitely difficult because of how much practice and mastery you have to cultivate in order to fight off just one boss. Yup, you heard me, just one. And not only that, in some cases, you just have to wish that luck is there to help you get through. Now I thought getting over Inkwell Isle 1 made me somewhat of an expert in Cuphead. I couldn't understand people who keep saying that the game can be unbearable. Little did I know that this is actually true. More often than not, bosses in higher tier levels become tougher. Let's look at one of the most difficult bosses I encountered in the game, Baroness Von Bonbon.
disclosure, it took me almost two hours to defeat this Candyland princess because of her many minions who are all out to get you at the same time. There are already a number of food variations in the first three parts of this fight, such as the waffle and the gumball machine. On top of that, you also had to deal with a jelly bean and random cotton candy attacks from the princess herself. Because of these multiple minions you have to contend with, Cuphead becomes challenging. Where do you focus your attention on? Can you minimize your sense of dread and panic as your HP continues to diminish? Can you keep your composure to finally beat the boss? These are all the questions I've been asking myself while playing through Cuphead. Not only against the Baroness, a large part yes, but also throughout the major portions of the game. However, once you overcome the fights from one boss to the other and continue with your streak, you feel this huge sense of accomplishment that yes, you may be worthy enough to save Cuphead and Mugman. This is also what's charming about the game. It's largely based on player improvement, which means the amount of effort you put in is also equivalent to the amount of rewards you reap from it. As you learn the boss patterns and gain more reflex experience, you begin to understand the tactics that work when you encounter certain enemies. And that's the beauty of Cuphead. It lets you fail, experiment, improve, and repeat. Next is the design. Cuphead is beautiful. Its art style, all of which are hand-drawn frame by frame and employs watercolor techniques, is based off of 1930s cartoons. This was what initially drew me into trying the game, because I grew up watching old cartoons from Popeye, to Felix the Cat, to the old Mickey Mouse. So watching videos of Cuphead before playing the game was definitely a nostalgic trip. And it's not just the art that's noticeable. We are also exposed to the game's jazz music. sounds become fast-paced and louder as you intensely fight off one boss to the next. A brawl is surely brewing. You're up! Both art and music styles go hand in hand, and these are what helped me get through Cuphead's difficulty. I couldn't stand the thought of throwing in the towel just because of Baroness Von Bonbon or King Dice. No way those two tricksters can get to the best of me! Let's face it, Cuphead's story is direct, and you won't be staying for that alone. Instead, playing through this challenging game, seeing the eye-catching graphics, and listening to the varied and upbeat songs and sounds are the reasons why you would choose to stick by Cuphead. Rarely though, it can be laborious because of the learning curve and the improvements and upgrades one has to experiment with in order to progress. But that can also be converted into a plus if you enjoy hard-earned achievements and this type of unique platformer gameplay. Hear me out here! I highly recommend buying Cuphead even at its full price for those of you who are looking for a charmingly difficult yet beautiful game that challenges your pattern memory, reflexes, and sense of achievement, and makes you question if luck is on your side. Thank you for watching the video. May luck be ever in your favor.